moron! Hey, moron! No! No, no, look at me! I'm the Wawa Water Boy, dude! I'm the motherfucking fucking one who pulls the shots. And you better pay me the respect that I gave your brother, or we're gonna have a problem. A bad one. Now get the fuck out of here. Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Vu. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Vu Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Sunday, and tomorrow we have the uh, eclipse that's coming. I think here in Virginia, we'll be having like 83% or something. If I go, I don't know, about five hours west, I could probably get the whole thing but who's got that kind of time who's got that kind of time i'm not sure that i do but hey you know um everybody who's in texas you're gonna be getting a lot more than i am so remember don't look at the thing with your naked eye okay i done ordered my glasses so you know they're plastic and all that i got a six pack of them and i'll set my tripod out and put one of the uh one of them on my camera so we can see what we can see with the Eclipse. All right, so we're having a great day here today. And, you know, I'm just sitting there running back in my mind. You know what's funny? In my mind, this is what's funny. I, I, I don't know if I am different, if I'm from a different generation. You know, people told me when I first really started doing YouTube that I was too old. Um, I'm not good looking enough. You know, I don't have that slamming, you know, lady body and everything else that's going to get people to watch. Um, I don't know high tech and green screens and stuff that there's no way in the world I can make it YouTube. Now, I haven't made it yet, but I'm headed in that direction. The thing that's crazy to me that I just don't understand is, and this is beyond just YouTube, but people have to shit on others to feel better. If somebody is doing their thing and doing good with it, hey, you do you, bro. But people feel the need that no matter what you do, they have to shit on you, rain on your parade, and tell you what you're doing doesn't matter. I don't understand that mentality, but that just seems the way it is. You know, you go through some of the comments that you read from people and things like that, that, you know, when people succeed, I'm happy that they're succeeding. And when I see people succeed, it makes me realize things are possible. And that makes me motivated as opposed to people who are shitting on somebody else succeeding instead of taking that as motivation to succeed themselves. Because as Denzel Washington says, this is very poetic. Those who can do. Those who can talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline to talk about other people or can you step up? You know what? Can you step up? Can you step up? Can you be more than just a critic or an asshole. That's my motivation here for Sunday. How about you trying to do something like that person? Put yourself in that shoe. Because I get tired of this world that is so ready to fight about things that just don't matter. And it's sad. So later today, of course, 5 o'clock Eastern, we have our call-in show, 5 o'clock Eastern. And if you're a channel member, uh, you get the link and stuff like that. You know, uh, we got all kinds of great people that come in here. And it's like, we've been doing this for like three years now. And, you know, it's, it's like my friends hanging out at a sports bar. And we're getting closer and closer to the draft. Um, also, I'm going to be doing some more work with Game Time Brian. Shout out to Game Time Brian and uh, Primetime Phil, you know, my man DMV and E2 Blue and everybody else because everybody's out here right now because we're trying to figure out what the hell is going on with the Cowboys or not going on with the Cowboys and trying to figure out which way the Cowboys are going to go in the draft. 
And so we're going to go through, me and Brian, later on, we're going to do a series of these. We're going to go by position by position, um, the 30-day visits of the guys that they brought in and guys that they might be interested in bringing in uh, for workouts and things. And this is actually very critical because typically guys that they bring in are guys that they draft. So this gives you a window into what they're looking at. And I can say going through this that um, offensive line, linebackers, and running backs are the boatload of the visits. There's a couple of cornerbacks, a couple of tight ends, uh, I think one wide receiver or so. But for the most part, the Cowboys are definitely looking at their shortcomings. Not so much the defensive line, but maybe there's a different plan there. But we'll definitely be doing some stuff on there. I hope you tune in, check it out, and things. And we'll see how close to being right we are with the list of the actual people the Cowboys bring in. All right, so the question here is, are the Dallas Cowboys effing up by not getting players in here? Mark Sareff says, under Jerry Jones, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. Well, I can't say that they won't or that they can't. The thing about the NFL is the NFL goes through streaks where somebody does something right, everybody copies it, and and that becomes the new trend. And the thing, though, is... Until somebody does it differently, that'll be the trend. But the NFL is constantly evolving. So the last, you know, five, six years, being all in a free agency has been all the rage and it's been working. You know, the sad part about the Cowboys, and this is where I say that sometimes the pendulum swings too far. And it needs to swing a little bit back. And I think the Cowboys, I know you're going to say I'm crazy. I know you're going to say I'm crazy, but I'm not, again, I've I've gone through my emotions of the Cowboys, you know, that they're not signing the big name free agents, but how many of the big name free agents have we seen go on to win Super Bowls? I, I can't think of too many that have, but be that as it may, it definitely makes a better team. But the fact that the Cowboys have not been able, been into that whole free agency frenzy but yet there's still always a playoff team or close to being a playoff team says that they're doing something right because we've seen a lot of teams that have been going into free agency for a long time that aren't having the success that the Cowboys have you remember in 2016 when the Giants had that quarter billion dollar defensive line that ended up kind of blowing up And in that time, the Giants have been a playoff team once. It's not that they hadn't been playing in free agency. They had been. They drafted a quarterback first round. You can look at the Jets that have spent more money than anybody else in free agency. They're not making the playoffs. The thing is, the Cowboys are getting close. They're getting 95% of it right. It's that other 5%. And I dare say that the Cowboys made two really good moves last year with Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore. Two fifth-round draft picks. You got two guys that played significant time and stuff for you. And who's to say that the Cowboys won't be doing that? And looking at you know the list of the 30 visits and where the Cowboys are looking, if the Cowboys find a stud offensive lineman, which they've been good at in the first round, You know, we've had quite a few all pros that they've drafted in the first round. If they pull one of those and get another, you know, Tyler Smith on the offensive line. And if Brock Huffman is another one of these guys that you bring up that, you know, like Terrence Steele, who everybody want to get rid of his rookie year as an undrafted rookie free agent, became a really good tackle, got injured. We'll see how he is this year. If he plays right there. And you draft a running back, your offense is one of the best in football as it stands right there. Two players. Two players. That's all we're talking about. So 
you look at this, and maybe the Cowboys, knowing they've got the extra picks and stuff next year, the compensatory picks, maybe they pull off some of these trades because you still look at it and say, Stefan Diggs was only a second-round pick. There's some plays that could happen, and it could be if it ends up being that the Cowboys get a decent player and don't lose a comp pick, then they're ahead of the game. They could be ahead of the game. This whole thing is not finished. We've done this every year where we go ahead and say, you know, the Cowboys suck. They don't care about winning. You know, we're going to be a four-win team. And somehow we don't end up being there. I know we have not had the playoff success that we want, but I think we can. Let's go to the tape here where Mark Sareth literally kills the Cowboys. Interesting things. The first is my guy, Mark Schlereth, our buddy Hope Stink, wrong. with strong thoughts on who is responsible for the Cowboys' shortcomings. Listen to this. Hmm. When I know the coach has no authority over me, and I know the coach has not been empowered, and I know that this scapegoat, if we don't win, won't be me, it'll be we don't have the right guy then when push comes to shove and when the going gets tough ain't my fault you end up you end up developing an organization of finger pointers this is why i think the cowboys i think under jerry they're just not going to win hmm. Heard a lot of people mm. say things like that what did I, you think of that Luke? yeah look i love stink you know stink is my dude best and you know what and he he has a point now as far as a culture of accountability or lack thereof but look man like all season we, we constantly churn the cowboys about this kind of stuff about mm -hmm. culture and what's going on in the building is jerry a problem is mike mccarthy a lame duck is he you know is he not empowered and all look man when you're out on the football field stink stinks one of the best ever doing he's won championships galore you, you don't care about mike mccarthy and his relationship with jerry jones and what jerry's going to do after the game when you, you care about converting on third mm -hmm. down and stopping on third down, and if you aren't big you enough, go. strong enough, fast enough, smart enough to get it done, the Cowboys' issues are on the field, okay? What happened against Green Bay had nothing to do with Jerry Jones having a press conference after the game. It had everything to do with them trying to put a 200-pound linebacker in there against 12 personnel. Fix your football team. Fix this offensive line, because you ain't going nowhere with this offensive line and running game you got right now anyway. We can talk about culture all you want. You're going nowhere unless you fix the left side of your offensive line, get another running back, and make sure you have size on defense. We can talk until the cows come home about this stuff, and we will, about their culture. But none of us are there, so we don't really know anyway. Fix the football team. Fix the it's football team. It's going to matter anyway. Booger, I'll come to you on this next one here because I want everyone to hear it. I have been searching high and low for the great football mind that I have been, I've been, I've been craving. And I found it yesterday in the person of Stephen A. Smith on first day. Oh, uh, here we he go. He said this. Whoa. The Jets got a chance, bro. And I'm telling you right now, if you're telling me that everybody's going to be healthy, I would pick the Jets to win the AFC East this year. I really would. <laughs> what? That's my guy. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, 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 no, no. Talk to this. Oh. Talk to this. Oh, not talk to the, uh, you talk to the helmet. Okay. Uh, you're talking to the helmet. Talk to the helmet. Go on, talk to the helmet now. Whatever you're about to say, I want you to address it to the helmet. Okay. I would pick the Jets. No, in the, the AFC. helmet. AFC. The Jets. Yeah, Lewis, we're talking to the helmet here. Get out here. Let's talk to the helmet. What were you going to say? Okay, we're going to leave it right there. So here's the thing. Here's my thing. The Cowboys' biggest problem is they suck with the cap. They don't know how to do it, okay? Stephen Jones, the chemical engineer, with his assistant who was a server trainer for uh, Marketplace Corporate Headquarters and worked for the Cowboys for 20 years. If there's one thing that I would say the Cowboys should do is just hire you know, a, 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 a guy with a pocket protector, Okay, you know, pins in the pocket protector, a guy who maybe, you know, like the Cowboys did back in the day. See, this is where you have to understand one of the reasons why the Cowboys were great is they were always innovators that thought outside of the box. You had 
Tom Landry using a computer. I don't know if he actually used it, but this is before computers. This is back when they were vacuum tube computers, okay? You know, you'd have a room full of vacuum tube boxes and stuff in here that don't have as much computing power as your cell phone. Be that as it may, the Cowboys got a mathematician from India that knew nothing about football. What he did know is he knew numbers. And they created an algorithm that could help predict on what these players would be in the NFL. And they were able to go to small schools and things and plug in the numbers, meet these players, and find Hall of, future Hall of Famers. And they had better talent than others. And then, of course, Tom Landry innovated with, like, the shotgun, the shift, and things like that. It was crazy because I had it. It, you know, it's crazy because in high school, at my high school, Madison High School, we used to do that shift, even though we're in the Washington, D.C. area. And the thing about that shift is a lot of people don't know, but it was a way of coming to the line of scrimmage. And what we would do is, like, let's say it's like a 21Z, and it's coming, I'm the guard, and it's coming between me and the center. When we'd stand up, we would take just like a three- or four-inch step outside just open up just a little bit just to give you a little bit more of a crease or if it's pass play when we shift we shift we slide just a little bit closer in so that way there was less of a gap for the guys to run through and see this is the kind of little subtle innovations that make all the difference in the world and see we don't innovate anymore we don't innovate anymore but you have to get somebody who understands how to do these contracts better than what we were doing because we've had too many contracts that have blown up in our face that the Cowboys really need to go in and say, how can we make the player whole without destroying ourselves? How can we get these deals done without trying to play in the court of public opinion through the media and trashing our players that we want them to be all in? That's the downfall of the Dallas Cowboys, and that's how they screw things up. And I wish, I wish that they would just say, you know what, we are a mom and pop shop, but we need somebody who's better than what we are. Because if they could learn how to manage these contracts, manage these contracts where we're not screwing the pooch, and don't tell me it's Dak Prescott's fault because you can't tell me that Dak Prescott having a four-year, $160 million contract versus, you know, other guys having $250 million five-year contracts that are $52 million a year, they've got no cap money problems, but we spent less and somehow we're screwed? That says that you need somebody who needs to be a little more creative. That's my take, and um, we'll see how it goes. But definitely look out for the 30-30 visits as we get ready. We're counting down. We're two and a half weeks away from the draft. I can't wait. And um, we will be seeing you guys real soon. All right? Peace. Hey, look at this. Okay? Hold on, what's this here, Twiz? Before I even start, Sills, you got Mark Holmes all in his feelings yesterday. You said you don't, or he said you don't know shit about the Cowboys. And they're not trading his precious Dak. Who in the world said that I said they were trading Dak Prescott to the Patriots? That guy needs to understand. Hey, if you guys think I struggle in Super Chats, that guy needs to take an English lesson, and how to read a tweet. I said they're kicking around the idea of potentially trading Dak Prescott to the New England Patriots. I didn't say they were trading him. And I can guarantee Mark Holmes, who I've never heard of. I've never heard of Mark Holmes. I have no idea who Mark Holmes is. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's right. Xander just said it. Do you think Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes, 
has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? My new way, King Dick back here. And so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way.